So the first thing to do to your timber is think about the face side and face edge. Now, on the top of the door it's half glazed, so there'll be a rebate coming out of this top rail there, okay? So if there was any faults on the corner, like an Aris knot or a, a shake or anything like that, this is an opportunity to get rid of that fault because that piece will become a rebate. In this case, it's fine, there's no, there's no need to do that. The middle rail is going to have a rebate on one corner and a groove in the other. But just generally, I'll put the nicest side to the top because that's going to be the rebated piece. Um, it's nice clean grain there. In the bottom, there's no faults to get rid of. I think that's the nicest face because of that knot there. So we'll just face side that, face edge it. The bottom rail, the bottom rail has a groove in one side and that's, that's all the detail it has. So I'm just looking down here for the best side to put a groove in. There isn't really any bias to it. I can see there, there's um, the very center of the tree there. So that's created a little um, natural defect in there. So we'll put that to the back of the door and we'll make this face side and face edge. So that's the first thing. Have a look around your timber, have a look for blemishes, things that you can get rid of in rebates, etc. If that was the top rail and there's an Aris knot there, that's a perfect example of if I put the rebate in that bit, we'll get rid of that fault. Okay, so the top rail has a long and a short shoulder because it's going into the rebate. If I put the face side mark on there, you can see where that relates to this. So if we put that on there and mark the long and short shoulder, that'll be fine. But actually, we could do it on here much easier. So all I need to do is make sure that I can see Just like the mortises, where the shoulder lines are. Okay, so I've got the position of the shoulders for the top rail. The longest shoulder is on the face side because the face side has the rebate. Okay, so I can see from there that that is the rebate, therefore that must be the face side. So if I put that that way, it matches that direction. Put it central. This is just a bit longer than the 600, so we've got about five mil either side. So we'll just put it nice and central. Okay, we've extended these lines so that you can see them once the timber's on the drawing. Like so, get your combination square, mark the short shoulder on this side and the long shoulder on the face side. Same at the other side, short shoulder on the back, long shoulder on the face side. Once you've done that, Square those round to the end, but only mark them about a third in, and then that'll help you picture the tenon, okay? And that's the opposite of the marking out that we did before for the mortise, so straight away you can tell the difference. So that's the top rail done. Face side, long shoulder, back side, short shoulder. Now we'll repeat that again for the middle using the same setup, but what we can do is we can clamp these together and we can literally transfer those lines across and then we know they match. So we'll use that top rail as a template to mark the other ones. So I'll do that now. The only difference with the middle rail is that you've got a gunstock shoulder on the face side and you've got an extended shoulder or a long shoulder on the back side to cope with the mitres. Okay, so the middle rail is two long shoulders and then the bottom rail as a oblong mold on the back side, which will be a long shoulder. 
So the middle rail has two long shoulders. The bottom rail has the opposite to this. So instead of long on the face side, the bottom rail has the long shoulder on the back side and the short shoulder on the face side. I'll get them done um, and then you can check yours off against these. So, all the shoulders marked out. That's the only marking out you need for the tenons because the tenon machine will do the rest. So just to double check, we have top rail, long shoulder on the face side, short shoulder on the back side. Opposite on there. Middle rail, two long shoulders. So if you get your long shoulder on there, that should match the two shoulders on there so that's okay that's good to go and then the bottom rail is the opposite of the top rail so on the face side it's the short shoulder so that should match the back of your top rail yes and on the back side of your bottom rail it's a long shoulder because it's going to pocket scribe into your oblo mold so that should match the long shoulders on your top rail and it does so that's it one two three all done they should all look like that when you're finished